right, well, I want to welcome you to uh, the Staples uh, public meeting uh, tonight. I'm Dan Biles. I'm the Interim Director of Engineering Services. Um, and so we're going to we'll have a short presentation here. I think everybody kind of got four sheets. Um, first, I want to kind of thank you for coming out this evening. Um, we're going to kind of the intent is to get the information out to you then give you places that you can go in the future and get more information as things happen during construction. And we'll try to get that all out to you uh, in the next few minutes. And I want to honor your time, though, and try to get us through the information, answer your questions, you know, and, and, and go. Um, we're going to have people, staff members, standing up there until the last person leaves. So if you don't get your question answered, make sh don't leave until it gets answered. We'll have somebody up there to answer it, okay, around the board. Um, but real quick, um, first I want to thank the owners and the staff of uh, the Legacy Home Health for opening this facility up. Uh, to us tonight. Uh, thanks, I really appreciate that. This uh, kind of gives us a place right on the project where we can talk about it. Uh, thank you for that. Um, then I want to recognize a few of our elected officials tonight. I, random order. Uh, Larry Elizondo, Priscilla Liao, and David Loeb. I don't know if anyone, y'all want to say anything? All right. All right. Wow. Then I'm going to keep going. What's that? <laughs> so, it is. Hopefully everyone uh, picked up a, a pack of paper on their way in. And I just want to go through that real quick and make sure everybody has that because I, I don't want you to leave this. I want you to take it with you because it has some very important information in it. Uh, the first is an agenda of kind of what we're going to cover tonight and, and who's speaking. Uh, but the, bot the most important thing is the bottom where we have names and phone numbers. So during construction, if you have issues, those are the names and phone numbers to call to, to try to get your question answered. Uh, we'll have other ones, but that's, that's kind of the first place to go. The second thing is kind of a frequently asked question, uh, the pink sheet, and hopefully that kind of answers some of the broader questions uh, tonight. Um, but that's, again, for you to take, so you kind of keep as we go through the project. Then is just a comment sheet. So if you have comments, questions that you, know, you would like answer, but either you don't have time tonight and you've got to run to something, because I know we all have lives other than coming to something like this, fill it out, get it to one of the staff members, uh, whether it's city or with Freeze or somebody else, and we'll get, it, we'll get you an answer, okay? So make sure you do that if you have to run and you still have questions. And then the last item is a colored map that or there are larger copies back there, but don't lose this. And, and the reason why is, as you see the colors on there and the numbers, that tells you what phase of the project is where. And so if I'm, for instance, you know, at the corner of Wooldridge and Staples, I can look in front of me and see that I got stage 15 and stage 16, or phase 15 and 16. And so when, I, when we push out the schedule next week to the website that we'll give you later, you can go on there and see, oh, that phase starts roughly this month, and it will end roughly this month. So you have a very good idea of when we're going to be in front of your business. And then I'd tell you, you ought to look at the phase across the street, too, because that one impacts you as well. So look at those, but don't hang on to this. Don't, don't lose that. And if you happen to lose it, it'll be on the website, but that's a good piece of information. So uh, let me introduce a few people right now. Um, first. Uh, I just want all the city staff to stand up that are here with me tonight. We got quite a few of them, most of them are. So these are some of the guys, um, you know, the, tonight if you have questions afterwards you can grab these guys. Yeah, Charlie's back there waving, yeah, he's a traffic guy, so. Um, so that's the city staff that's here tonight. Then we have Freeze, uh, Nichols, Ron Guzman, uh, is the, uh, he's way over there, and then Nick Cicada. Did I get it right? Yep, you got all it. Right. I've been practicing all day on that one. And, and, and they'll, again, they'll stick around. They have the nice, pretty name tags, say so freeze on them, and they're the ones that actually designed the project for us. Um, then we have Bay Limited. I think we have two or three from Bay Limited here tonight. They're our contractor, so they're the ones actually doing the work. Um, and then our construction inspectors, we actually hired a firm to do the inspection for us, and Jerry Shackelford and Wayne Otto are back there in the back. Uh, Wayne is the guy that you should see a lot out here. Him, along with, we got a city inspector that's gonna work with him, or the guy, is the, really the guy you should be contacting and communicating with. 
Um, and then our communications team, uh, if, if you haven't noticed, uh, we're doing a little more communication on this project than we have in the past, and that's probably because we got 35,000 cars a day that go up and down Staples, we, we need to. Uh, and so that's uh, Lee Oliveri and Oliveri Associates, and so Leah's here, and then some other the staff are up there. Um, so that's kind of the, the introductions. And again, we're going to stay tonight until the last person has their question answered. And so, you know, don't be shy if you have a question about how's this going to impact my property or, or how's this going to impact my business and what's it going to look like to grab us and make sure you get your question answered because that's what we're here for tonight. Okay, I, I mean, really, that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what we're here for. Uh, so as I go, kind of start a description of the project, let me start off. We are not doing medians. Okay? All right. So I should have no more questions about medians tonight. <laughs> we, we are building the road. It's uh, going to be about two feet wider than the existing road. Uh, it's going to be concrete. Uh, council made that decision to go concrete instead of asphalt. Um, it's going to be five lanes wide, and like I said, two feet wider. And the reason it's a little wider is so that if there becomes a time in the future that it makes sense to do some kind of medians, we don't have to tear the whole road up to do it. So you won't really notice it as you're driving it, but if at some point in the future it makes sense maybe to put some medians in at certain places, we will have the room to do it, but we're not doing it with this project. Okay? Uh, it will include new sidewalks, eight-foot wide sidewalks, you know, the five driving lanes, we'll have new traffic signals at the locations that we have them now, uh, and then just a lot of the normal road stuff that you see during, during road construction. New utilities, you know, water, wastewater, stormwater, and improved stormwater system uh, is going in with the project as well. Um, but because of where this project is and the 35,000 cars a day and all the businesses that line this corridor, you know, we've done some unique things on this project to try to help make it as painless as possible for the public and the businesses that line the route. Uh, one of the things we've done is Congress, uh, Congress, <laughs> Council authorized uh, the, the additive where we're spending $100,000 to get the project done in 18 months instead of 24 months. So right off the bat, you know, Council stepped up to the plate and said, well, let's take six months off this project. And, and so that's what we're doing and we're working towards doing that. Um, and so the other thing we've done is if when you see the phasing plan, you'll notice that there are a lot of phases. I mean, I think the total number is roughly 23 or 24 phases, and that was done so that we, we don't take down the road from Williams to Holly and work on it, and then we flip over and do the other thing. We're, we're taking down smaller segments of the road to work on it as we go through there. Now, we're still working with a contractor because because they've come up with some pretty good ideas about how do we phase this to actually maybe even save a little more time so we're still working through the actual schedule which is why you don't see the a little more detailed schedule tonight as we're because we're still working through some of those issues but so you may see some different things but in, in general we're going to stay with these the small phasing it's just how we do them and we may work them out but in we will start at the williams inn and we want to start at williams because we want to be as far away from SPID uh, next Christmas as we can be. Um, and so you'll see roughly mid to late March, you'll see traffic control starting at Williams and they're gonna start digging right on Williams. Um, and we'll work the other way. Now, you know, we've met, I don't know how many times we've met with businesses up and down, down this route, but we've met several times uh, with various businesses to talk about this project. Uh, and we've recently worked through some sign issues with development services so if you own a business on staples and i have traffic control in front of you as part of the project you can go get a, a temporary sign permit from development services to to do some additional signage on your frontage and that, now i asked talk to development services about the details of what that means but you basically it's a no fee permit it's a temporary permit where you can go get some additional signage from them and, and put it on your property uh, as as i have traffic control or construction in front of you now, if you're down at the other end of the project and I don't have any construction in front of you, you're not going to go get the permit. So this is only for when I have barrels in front of your business. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put names of businesses actually on the barrels so we can try to point from the road to the businesses. So we're going to try to do that as well. Now, I mean, I know I drive this construction like everybody else, and those are sometimes still hard to see. But, but we're going to try to work on that. Um, 
but we will maintain access to the businesses. You know, if you have two driveways, you may lose one driveway while we take that down and rebuild it, and then we'll flip over to the other driveway. If you only have one driveway, we're gonna work with you on the timing of that, and so we'll take down maybe half the driveway if it's wide enough, and then come back and do the other half. So it, whether we went asphalt or concrete on the road, it was gonna be concrete driveways. Uh, and so that is where we're gonna need you to communicate with our inspector and our contractor to the, to the timing of that, so that if you say, hey, this is a good time for me, maybe we can make it happen in that time frame and get that done. Um, work hours, um, you know, we've given the contractor extended work hours. Um, that, that means anywhere from you know, 12 to 18 hours a day, they're gonna be on site. Again, it's try to get this thing done as fast as possible. We recently completed a noise study up and down Staples, so we know what the ambient noise is today. And so that, you know, if I authorize the contractor to do some late night work, I can say, hey, you need to stay below this decibel at the right of way line. And as long as they're below that decibel, they're probably below what you're hearing today. And so you may see them working, you know, through the night and sometimes to get some work done just, you know, so we can make sure we get this thing done as fast as we can. Um, on the, as we're going through, you know, we have five lanes today. When you go through the construction zone, you're only gonna have two lanes. There won't be a center turn lane because we need to build that with the construction. And so when we have construction at or near an intersection, you're not gonna be able to make left turns, just like we did you know, at Staples and Everhart and those. We just can't afford left turns because one car can back up a couple thousand pretty quickly. Um, you know, we're gonna work to try to figure out ways to make it easier to get in your businesses if, if your, your traffic's a lot of left turns. So we're gonna work on that, but again, you're just gonna have to have a little patience with us because one car trying to make a left turn can really delay a lot of people up and down this road. Um, so the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the speed limit along Staples during construction. You know, right now it's 40 and 35, depending on where you are through this section, and it's gonna, we're gonna temporarily sign it for 25. Um, and that will probably have some increased enforcement by PD. And that's not just for your businesses, that's not just for the public, that's for the safety of the construction workers too. So you know, keep that in mind as you're going through that, we will be reducing the speed limit temporarily through the construction zone. Um, again, this, this isn't gonna be an easy project. Now, I'm not gonna sit up here and say it's gonna be easy and we're not gonna have any issues, but our goal is to communicate as much as we can with you so that when issues pop up, you know, you can say, hey, what's, what's happening today? You know, you can go to the website or go to, and, and find out what's going on and we can get you the information. So, um, so that's kind of what's going on. Let me, I'm gonna introduce uh, Nick real quick and he's gonna say some things, a little more detail again. He knows a lot of the details about the specifics of the project um, and, then, and then we'll kind of go on through the rest of the agenda and then I'll get back up here and close it up, so. Well, thanks, Dan. Um, like Dan said, uh, my name is Nick Sakeva, and uh, I work with Friesen Nichols. Uh, we are the design engineer for this project for the city. Um, what I'd like to emphasize real quick, and, and Dan did cover a lot of uh, the high points of the construction of this project. Um, a lot of the questions that we've gotten during the design of this project, we've put on this frequently asked question sheet. So I would encourage each of you to, to look at this and and, um, and also, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time up here. I want to hit on the high points of the design of the project, but I, I'd really, to me, the important time is going to be spending one-on-one -on -one with you, looking at the maps and, and, and explaining uh, the design process that we went through for this project. Um, just real quick, um, out here, um, as you came in, if you came in late, we've got two sets of exhibits for the project. Uh, the ones on this side are the same as, as those on that side, so uh, we wanted to give a um, maximum amount of, amount of room for people to go and, uh, and look to see either where their business is at or uh, what their concern area is. Um, basically, as Dan mentioned, the limits of the project are from Williams to Saratoga. Um, each of the four major intersections will be reconstructed on this project, starting with the Williams intersection. We're reconstructing Williams, Holly, Wooldridge, and half of Saratoga, uh, because the other half was done as part of the uh, tech stop project. Um, we will be using concrete pavement. Um, concrete pavement 
uh, 10 inches of concrete pavement on this project. Um, a big difference with concrete pavement is that um, there's a lot of benefits. There's also some things that uh, it takes a little bit longer to cure. It takes a little bit longer than asphalt to put traffic on it. Um, council awarded concrete pavement based on a 30 year life cycle cost analysis uh, for the project. Uh, the Holly Road intersection was recently reconstructed and the Holly Road, I wanted to point out, the Holly Road intersection will remain an asphalt intersection. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna overlay the Holly Road intersection and only reconstruct the approaches. So you'll have, you'll have concrete and then Holly Road will remain asphalt and then concrete again. So just wanted to make that, make that clear to everyone tonight. Uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, it can't be said enough, there will be no medians on this project. Um, the, the center turn lane that you see out there today will be reconstructed as it is today. Um, the current street as it exists is uh, 68 feet from back of curb to back of curb. We're adding two additional feet, so that means that the lanes are pretty much going to stay the same width that they are today. Uh, one of the big improvements that we're doing on this project um, impacts the pedestrians and the cyclists. We're, we're constructing eight foot wide sidewalks on each side of the roadway. That's going to give a very nice wide path to pedestrian traffic. Um, another point um, is that there will not be, since we're constructing those sidewalks, there will be no striped uh, bicycle lanes within the roadway itself. So we want to encourage the cyclists to use the sidewalks and not, not be on the roadway surface itself. Um, AEP will be uh, relocating and, uh, and servicing all of the street lights. There is existing street lighting on Staples right now. They will be servicing those lights. Um, the project includes reconstruction of all the major utilities in Staples. Uh, we have a eight inch water from Williams to Holly, and we also have an eight and 12 inch water line that goes from Holly to Saratoga that will be reconstructed. Uh, there's also a major sewer line uh, from Holly to um, Williams that will be reconstructed as part of this project. Uh, the biggest utility that you'll notice is the, uh, the stormwater boxes that will be constructed um, at the Mary Carroll Ditch. Uh, we're increasing the stormwater capacity as part of this project. Uh, we've improved uh, the conveyance of the localized uh, storm drainage on this project. You'll see a big improvement during normal rainfall, um, that the street will be able to collect a lot more water and keep a lot more water off the, off the surface itself. Um, as Dan mentioned, this project is split into uh, 24 phases. Um, the sequence of construction is still being worked out with the uh, contractor at this time and will be posted as soon as that's available. So the, the number that you see on the, on the sheet is the number that you're gonna be in for the rest of the project. So, so please pay attention to that. Um, one item that probably can't be emphasized enough on this project is that no matter where the contractor is working, the project will be, um, uh, instead of five lanes, it'll be two lanes. So what that's going to mean is during the daytime and peak hours, it's going to be very slow traffic to get through this corridor. And I want people to understand that. Um, the, the phasing solutions that we're proposing have been worked out with the city and, and we continue to look for efficient ways that we can maximize access, not only to businesses, but also to people that are traveling through Staple Street on the south side. Um, as Dan mentioned, this corridor tra uh, carries more than 35,000 vehicles a day. Um, so finding ways to get that traffic through this corridor efficiently um, is going to be a challenge. Um, I guess what I'd like to do now in, in, in I, what, I'll be available to answer any specific questions on the properties themselves and, and the utilities and what to expect in front of individual businesses. Um, I'd like to introduce Leah Olivari, and Leah is uh, going to be talking about some of the public involvement that has gone on with this project. Thank you, Cam. Hi, how are y'all tonight? Uh, the city made a commitment, the city council uh, was most adamant that they wanted some sort of special treatment for Staples, recognizing what an important economic area it is and also what an important transportation corridor it is. So what we tried to do on this project is a little bit unusual and a little bit more 
than, they're, than normally are done for street projects. So hope y'all all feel very special. We set up a special website. It's on your pieces of paper there. It's called Drive Staples, because we want people to know that they can drive Staples. We'll have a Twitter account, and uh, that is also on your uh, paper, and we'll try to put updates there. The contractors will be giving us updates, and we'll try to keep you up to date on that level. Uh, we would very much like you to fill out your comment forms. I think um, Dan mentioned the special signage ideas that uh, the city is embarking on for this project. But if you have some ideas about maybe advertising your business, I'm not saying they're gonna happen, but we'd like to work with that, you on that. I mean, there may be a way on the website that we could do some special promotions, you know, free pie if you come uh, and, and pardon our mess kind of thing. The other thing uh, that we'll be doing on that is trying to put up detours so that people know how to get to your business if there is a, a problem in your particular area. Again, I want to emphasize that those numbers that you see are going to be kind of, you know, memorize your number. Now, the project, as everybody said, may not go from one to two to three to four. There may be some movement in there to try to make it the most efficient it can. But that number will be an important communication tool for y'all. So fill out your forms. Um, Elvia Aguilar on my staff is up there. She's got her cards on the table. We'll be more than happy to talk to you about it after the meeting. And then we also have um, an email account set up. And it's engineering at cctexas.com. So if you get some ideas during the project, feel free to email us. We're gonna see how this works. If there's people that just feel like they're being left out because it's all digital, then we may end up doing some um, mailed out newsletters. But uh, in this particular area, we thought that most people would prefer the more instantaneous reaction. So thanks very much for coming out tonight and I'll turn it back to Dan. All right, so again, want to thank you for coming out tonight and, and let me just run through those ways that you can contact us or get information uh, one more time somewhere on the sheet you know the drivestaples.com website you know the state if you're if you're if you do the twitter thing you know it's drive staples is 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 it's it's an account and they'll be pushing information out um you can get a hold of us at engineering, just at engineering at cctexas.com. Real easy, and, and it comes into a general email account, and then we get it to the right person and get you answered. Um, a couple other ways, if you, know, if you don't do the Twitter thing, but you do Facebook, search uh, City of Corpus Christi Engineering. We have a Facebook page out there where we'll post the same stuff you see on the Drive Staples website is going to be on that Facebook page. We're also going to post stuff on every other project I got going on in the city. Um, so if you have interest in another project, that information may be there as well. So, you know, we're trying to push as much information out there so you don't have to go and, and pull it. Mm -hmm.